Tips. Welcome back to another Field and Garden podcast. It is your friend, Lisa Mason Ziegler. And hey, I appreciate you for dropping in and you're in for another great talk that I think is perfectly timed. We are recording this in June and flower farmers are heading into that season where they're at the abundance of flowers are really coming in and we're all always looking for the next sale. You know, something that a, a customer said to me years ago, um, he was in the sales business. He worked at a bank and he said, you know, Lisa, you're only as good as your last sale. Even if you have a great week this week, <laughs> That's you have to do it again next week, right? So friends, I have my good friend, Ellen Frost is my guest here today. Hi, Ellen. Hi, everyone. And, you know, Ellen is a longtime friend of the Gardener's Workshop and of the podcast. She's been on here. and We've done so many things together and we're really excited, um, which we haven't really talked about yet. But Ellen has just created, y'all, a new on-demand course called Preparing to Sell to Florist. And friends, I'm going to just tell you like it is. I watched it for the first time. Earlier today, my team has been the one processing it, and I've been reading all their raving emails to each other about it, but I thought it would be best for me to watch it right before I talk to Ellen so it'd be fresh in my mind. And friends, I am here to tell you, this is something we've never had before. This is a deep dive on how to pave the road for that first meet with a florist, how to find them, what to do, availability, figuring out pricing. Anyway, we're going to talk all about that. Um, but before we jump into that, if you don't know Ellen Frost, Ellen is like a flower farmer's best friend. Um, people in the industry say that every flower farmer needs an Ellen in their life. Ellen owns a design studio in Baltimore going on, I think, probably 15 years. Yeah. And she only uses locally grown flowers in her design work and they do all different types of outlets and I'm going to let her tell you about all that but it's like Ellen is our dream customer and she's worked with with growers this entire time of her career and that's what she has put into a course what what makes her um, really drawn to specific sellers the flower farmer friends. Um, so that's what we're talking about today. So Ellen, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. I always like to be here. So let's just first talk about, you know, the book that launched many of us. I almost want to say all of us, but there are a few people oh. that aren't familiar with Lynn Bozinski's book, The Flower Farmer. Lynn was like, the precursor to any information we have today. And she does literally give you a little um, step-by-step -step of how to find a florist. I mean, that's what I, I literally follow her instructions. Yes. Scope out, scope out your customer. You know, I went down there all winter long because it was a gift shop also and pretended like I was shopping and scoped them out to see who was in charge. What did the flowers look like? How were they packaged? You know, and I mean, I was so terrified because I didn't have, there was so much missing. There were so many holes, I guess. And your course has just removed the fog. So first tell me what really sparked this idea for you to create this course? I mean, I think that, like you said, we've been in business 15 years now and we have been sourcing locally from farmers. And we wanted to share the information that we have sort of collected over these 15 years about how they can best sell to florists. What we were also seeing, as you well know, um, with the supply chain issues that we've had in the last couple of years, there has been a much like a huge increase in demand for local flowers. So florists, you know, who have traditionally bought from wholesalers are now more and more seeking new ways to buy flowers. And the main way they're looking to do that is to buy from local farmers. And so what we wanted to do is make sure that the farmers that we work with and farmers all over 
are prepared for that increase in demand so that they are ready to successfully sell to florists. And frankly, like the course is a lot of the things that we have had farmers ask us over and over and over again. You know, the same questions come up when we talk with farmers, you know, how to meet a florist, how to make that first, that first meeting, you know, count, how to be best prepared, how to price, how to send availability. All these things were things we were hearing over and over again. So we wanted to make sure that we could share the information that we had because it is like frankly unique information because we have worked with so many growers over the years, we found ourselves in a unique position to share that information. You know, that is so true. And I know, you know, so Ellen, y'all may or may not know that Ellen has done a big course with us. When was that two years ago? That was right before the pandemic, I think. And it was really targeting florist or designers or anybody that wanted to be on the design side or event side of the flower business right. and how they could engage local growers. Right. And I know that we, and I recommended to people, to flower farmers, it's like, you want to know everything you can know about your customer. And so a lot of flower farmers I know had just tons of questions uh -huh. about this type of information, which this isn't really what that course was about. It right. was like the other side of the story. Um, and so I know that in my mind, I thought, you know, that is really a course that could really be really, really helpful. So, so you've mentioned several things that just spark things in my mind. I think that now with the pandemic and the um, shipping lanes that are so congested, um, there has never been a more opportune time um, to get florist as a customer, you know? 100%, yeah. I mean, we are seeing, and that can, you know, what started at the beginning of COVID, you know, continues today. There is news of um, protests that just started yesterday in Ecuador, in Quito, downtown, that is blocking streets, that's blocking the airport. And we're hearing florists already, after only one day of protests, telling their customers that their flowers are gonna be delayed, that they're gonna have to have substitutions. So it continues. The, the supply chain issues that started with COVID are continuing to today. And again, that just makes traditional florists who buy from wholesalers more interested in buying from local partners. And, you know, I think one of the points um, that I thought was really interesting that you make in the course is that you know, we are not going to replace, local farmers are not going to replace the wholesaler. Yes. I mean, not first off, the volume is sheer craziness yes. and the sheer um, selection that they can offer that's beyond most of us. I mean, from tropicals and roses, yep. but I mean, and I, and I so got with you. I mean, I was sitting there nodding through the whole course. <laughs> You know, I sold to Colonial Williamsburg for about 15 years. They were a huge vacuum. Of oh, yeah. I mean, not the, it's not just when the queen comes, do they do flowers big? They do flowers big every day. They have stuff like that going on. They used to. They don't quite use as many flowers. But I was so fortunate that their floral leader, the designer buyer guy, was like all about local. And, you know, he, he would call me up and say, we have this, you know, the, 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 I call them the sugar daddies, the big supporters, the people that really fund the, the, the Colonial Williamsburg. Um, there's a special group of these people and they show up like three times a year and they basically wine and dine them. They, he would call me up and say, all right, you tell me what you think you're going to have next week. Mm -hmm. And I will plan around that. And then I'll order everything else that I have to get from the wholesalers. Yeah. And it was like exactly what you're talking about in that course. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the goal of when you're creating this course, what was really the goal that you really wanted to throw out there to folks? The thing is, I think I the, the most important thing is, you know, for us is always relationship building. You know, we understand that strong relationships between farmers and florists is what makes us both successful. And so teaching people how to have great relationships with florists, I think was definitely 
on our list. But also we wanted to help farmers have the confidence to sort of know what to do with a florist because cold calling or, you know, walking in and trying to make a sale without having sort of done your homework um, can often lead to a disappointing outcome. And then farmers, I think, are hesitant to go back or they're hesitant to try again. And really what we wanted to do was set them up for success and build their confidence so that they know as much as they can going into that attempted sale. And, you know, it might not work still, but at least you have done all the work you can do up front to make that work. You know, that is so true. And it's like, when I'm watching, I'm thinking, this is really giving you all those little bells and whistles to be a professional. You know, I'm always talking about, you know, there's a whole lot of people out there calling themselves flower farmers, but are they really professional cut flower growers? Meaning, are they really growing and selling and following through and continuing to sell over and over? Because I think, um, you know, I feel like, and I have mentioned this in so many different places and times in my career, I feel like the reason I'm successful today was because when I approached that very first florist that I stalked for a whole winter, I went in there and swept him off his feet, handed him my list and said, this is the kind of stuff I'm growing. I'm going to send out a list on Tuesday mornings at eight o'clock. Are you yes. here then? And I'm going to call you. No, I don't know how many I'm going to have yet. That'll be on the list that comes and it'll have the price. I mean, we had nowhere. He had nothing to say except right. these are the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. He didn't have to question me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you had done all the homework. You had prepared yourself. And I want to help farmers be have that preparation under their belt. And you also give the resources to do that. You know, yeah. I mean, um, I think that the avail availability list information, because, you know, I'm one of those people, I just basically sent a list with numbers and names. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I felt like I had trained my little posse of florists and they kind of knew what they were looking at, but it's a different day to day. Anyway, I just really felt like you really did a great job of that. Thank you. I was going to say florists are so used to buying from the wholesaler in a yes. certain way that farmers have to understand that and be prepared to sell to them in the way that they want to be sold to. I mean, that's that's how it is right now. You know, it's, it's really, really true. And I feel like um, your guidance on the different levels of an availability list, you know, from the non-tech simplistic version, which is definitely where I was, to the tools that are available today that are, I mean, it just changes everything. And yeah. and it does for you to compete. You know, I'll tell you that um, I was a house guest um, at Michael and Jim's house. He is the florist on the Barefoot Contessa. Yeah. And Stan and I stayed at their home for two nights. They invited us to come to the Hamptons on our way somewhere else. And we stayed. Well, we happened to be there over the weekend. And mm -hmm. he brings up this auction on his TV of Holland, where he oh. literally orders his flowers on Saturday night, sitting at home, having oh. dinner. And it was like, oh my gosh, he gets to see him. He gets, yeah. to see him. I mean, it was, I mean, things have definitely evolved. Yeah. And if growers, especially my generation, I'm speaking to you people, um, we have to come into this generation. I mean, we are now the old farts um, and you just really laid the groundwork with not only the suggestions yeah. of what are the options, but also the resources to actually do it. And I also really loved um, learning about the floral industry. That was, that's kind of where you start, right? Yeah. I mean, because I think we all want to know as much about our customer or our potential customer as we can. That sets us up for success. So I, you know, as a florist, I want to know as much about my wedding customers as I can so that I can 
propose things to them that make sense for them. It's the same for, for flower farmers. The more you know about florists and florist needs, the better able you are to sell to them. And so you said something, and I want to actually um, talk just a little bit about cold calling. Yeah. Now, you know, I think, so first off, I never did a cold call because, not because I didn't think it was the right thing to do. I did it because I was terrified to be rejected in person. Yeah. And so, because I realized, I thought, okay, if I just drop in on them, what if they are busy? What if they, they can't talk to me? Yeah. What if they walk out to my, if they walk out to my van with a price list and say, you want this for that? Do you know what I mean? It's like, not that those, those, I mean, those things happen sure. you can about them. I mean, we're currently, um, I had, I'm not sure if it was in my closed group or one of the public groups of a floor, a um, grower in a smallish town that the actual local florist came in, kind of raked her over the coals for selling. You know, people don't always act appropriately. Yes. And so I was really afraid to do a cold call. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of fished out a way to approach my florist. First off, I approached him with samples, as you recommended, um, and then sent them a list and called them to say, like, what do you want? Ch tell me your list. Um, but they had all the information that they needed. And but you take it even a step further with stem length, with pictures, with a color reference and not mystique whatever yes. <laughs> whatever it's is it blue or is it purple light blue light purple dark purple light purple what is it regular colors i mean these people need a crayon box <laughs> that make up these color names right I and so tell me what i want to hear from you is if somebody cold calls you and it just goes really not very well, you know, you're in the middle of loading a truck for a wedding at, sure. the, mu at the museum. <laughs> so it's a set stage for you're losing your mind. Right. And some farmer comes in the midst of all that with armloads of flowers. Not, I mean, it's that first impression. You only get that one time, right? And it's really difficult because everybody is busy. Everybody has, you know, priorities. If that happened to us, and we've had people cold call, walk in where we're busy. And, you know, unfortunately, I mean, we're not, we're still, you know, cordial. We're still nice, but there's no time to hear about your business or sit down and talk to, have a cup of coffee, learn, you know, what you're doing. It's more like, okay, well, thanks, but we have to move on to something else. You know, it's, and that's for me, that's not how I want to be either. I don't want to, I want to have time to talk right. to you and learn about you and learn about your product and, and be totally present for you. But if you just walk in and we're in the midst of, you know, working on a wedding, that generally is not going to be the time that I can do that. Right, right. So Ellen, what would you say is you're most excited about this course to share with so many potential flower farmers that it just is going to open a door for them? I think, you know, the three things that we are focused on is finding your customer, pricing, and availability lists. And these three things are so key to having a successful sale and to build a relationship with that florist because one of the big things I think that we we want to really drive home is that farmer and florist sales they are not about you know one-off sales it's like okay I have lots of tulips this week can I unload them on you and then I'm never going to talk to you again the relationships that we have with our farmers are so strong because they have been built over many years, over, you know, trust, over great products, over dealing with hard challenges. It's, these are relationships that, that make our business what they are. And I want to give farmers as many of those sort of um, tools to build those relationships, those strong relationships with florists so that they're not 
just trying to unload something one week because they have a lot of it. I want them to be able to build long-standing relationships with florists so that they can both be successful together. I mean, that is just such great advice, Ellen, because, you know, I think that we learned during COVID that those customers, whichever side, farmers or, you know, people using local flowers, those folks that had a relationship with one of the other businesses, you know, I can still remember um, talking to one of our biggest commercial customers who was like, I mean, uh, so apologetic that he couldn't buy, he couldn't take his weekly huge stand in order because all of a sudden, as you know, sales stopped. But who do you think the first person he called was when he did? I mean, what did it take about two weeks for stuff to start kind of like, all right, people are still dying. They have to have funeral flowers. People are, you know, finding ways to sell their flowers. And do you think he called the wholesaler? No. He called me and says, all right, what you got? What can I, I mean, I'll take whatever it is that you have. Um, And so I feel like, this course came at such an appropriate time because the door is more open today than it has ever been open. Because as you mentioned earlier, so many florists that have would not give us the time of day three years ago, meaning fly, as flower farmers, because they're buying from big fancy wholesalers or whatever, are now like, what do you mean you have dahlias and ranunculus and anemones and um, peony? And it's like, yeah, our stuff is not only um, more gorgeous, fresher, fragrant, you know, doesn't make your hands fall off and just so many. So it's a great opportunity. So I really see that this course to help farmers find their customer, figure out their pricing, you know, and friends, I'm going to tell you right now, this course doesn't come with a list of prices. No. <laughs> I mean, it's the hardest part of our business. Um, yes. You know, I taught people that in our class. It's like, these are the steps you have to follow. There is no, like, take a left and just find it. Yeah. Everybody has to follow these steps. And you really provide the detail and the resources um, on how to actually do that. And the availability list, is once you found your customers and your stuff is priced right, I'm yeah. really excited for the course. Thank and you. The and um, I think that this is a way that many flower farmers can cultivate their own Ellens. Do you know what I mean? It's like, we have to help them understand us and we have to understand them. That's right. And it's a two-way street. And I know people don't want to hear that when they're standing there looking at 50 buckets that they're just trying to find a way to sell them. Friends, yes. it takes a little bit more, right? Well, Ellen, I really appreciate, you know, you joining me here today and for us to like kind of bring the course, let it kind of out in the open that um, people, of course, can go to the gardenersworkshop.com. So let me just tell you about the course a little bit. Um, you can find it at the gardenersworkshop.com. Um, it's an on demand course. So that means that it is on sale all the time. How long is it, Ellen? That is one thing I do not know. Um, is it it's like 90 minutes or? Yeah, about a little over an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and y'all, it is $49.95. I mean, it is a drop in the bucket. (laughs) Um, And, you know, we are trying so hard and so focusing on bringing you these short courses Uh that hit the major targets in different business areas on not only how to grow flowers, but it's the selling part, right? That so many people, you know, you don't have to be a salesman. When you have the steps, you just do the steps. And when you do them, that makes you a salesperson. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if anybody is not familiar with Ellen, I really recommend that you follow. She is carrying the torch here in the States um, for florist buying local. There's actually a hashtag, not hashtag. Um, We have an Instagram account, right? That is florist buying local um, where she posts. We really hope and ask that every flower farmer share that on their timeline for their customers, right? Yeah, for sure. The and more that way, have the more people know about local flowers, the more 
better right. for and I mean, not only that, they can go there and scroll the feed and mm-hmm. see what like, local's all about, right? We're trying to train these people to buy more flowers from us, flower farmers. That's <laughs> what this is really all about. But yeah. you can find Ellen, and all this will be in the show notes, um, at Local Color Flowers. And Ellen, just tell us about your business, um, where it is, and kind of how it works and everything. Sure. We are a floral design studio based in Baltimore, Maryland. We're right in the heart of the city. We provide flower, local flowers for all kinds of things. So weddings, events, floral design classes for retail, for subscriptions, single orders, um, all the things that people do with flowers, we do them with local flowers. And um, we also do special events. So things in the shop like a floral book club and flower club and all kinds of other fun things. Um, but everything is done with a local with local flowers at the heart of it. And so Ellen has um, has also has another course with us. Um, tell us about that course, Ellen. Yep, the big class is called uh, Growing Your Business with Local Flower Sourcing, and it is really it's great for flower farmers too. But it really is focused on floral designers, farmer florists, florists that want to source more local flowers and um, how they can do that uh, in the best way, in the best way possible. And it's a, I mean, I, I'm biased, but it's a great class. Um, And it is, like you said, sort of the flip side to this new, this new standalone class. So um, yeah, it's great. And I mean, it helps people to see how to embrace the marketing. I mean, what a marketing niche, flowers with a story anyway. Um, So Ellen is really, I mean, y'all should follow her just to see all the really cool, fun stuff. I, as I often say about her, Ellen has built this business model of what people think a flower shop is. Then they get in business and learn that most their flowers come in the back door in boxes shipped in from another country. And it's just not much fun. She has brought us back to the, just so many great community building, which is customers, friends. I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's all about. So Ellen, I'm really excited about your new course, Preparing to Sell to Florist, which is the course. It's $49.95. It's about an hour and a half long, friends. You can sit down and watch it, and then you're going to rewatch it. You're going to go check out all the resources that she has build your way so that you can go in and you're just going to sweep florists off their feet by being a professional. And this really just takes it to the very next level. For sure. Um, So, and friends, if you're enjoying our podcast, the Field and Garden podcast, we always appreciate, or I appreciate when you write a review, um, I read them all on whatever podcast app you're watching. Um, When you review our podcast, that makes your um, app show our podcast to browsers to more people just looking for a gardening or a farming podcast Um, so I really appreciate that and of course over at the gardenersworkshop.com you can find both of Ellen's courses as well as we have others of course our online um, garden shop is over there you know if you're in the need of seeds tools or supplies but friends there are also a ton of free resources there's just a lot of fun over there Um, So it's great for gardeners, great for farmers, and we're just trying to light the way for flower farmers and people that want to build flower-based businesses, whether you are a designer that wants to just, like, what is this local thing? You're right. My flowers orders are being canceled. How can, what can you do to help me? Um, We want to hear from all of you and um, and help you. So Ellen, thanks again, and um, you have a great season. Thank you. You too. All right, everybody. Ciao.